Hi, this is Kevin with the Cleveland Vibrator Company. You know, every day we get asked by customers to help them find the, the right vibrator for their application. That's what we're here for. The best tool that we have available for them is our selection guide. This is an accumulation of over 90 years of our experience in vibration packed into one simple guide that takes you through the process of putting in your, your hopper dimensions, your material characteristics, all the details about your application, simple formula, and you come out on the other side to a chart that says if you need this many pounds, these are the options that we have available. And I know that was a quick and abbreviated way of doing it, but it, it, but it really is that simple. Check out the guide if you haven't seen it. What you'll notice on the chart when you go through that process is that you'll have a number of units, maybe five or six different units that are all in that same force output range. So you have to decide which one of those units is best for your application. And you can have electric or pneumatic. And I'm only gonna talk about the pneumatic choices today. We've got electric units covered in other videos. So f feel free to check those out as well. What I've got here in front of me are three different pneumatic units that all have the same approximate force output. So let's talk about these a little bit and what are some possible applications these might be used for. The first one I'm gonna talk about is the piston vibrator. So it's a, a little small piston unit and it provides what we call a linear force. Meaning as the piston goes back and forth inside this body, it provides just a linear in and out force all on one plane uh, into that hopper wall. So it can flex the hopper wall. Uh, if it's an impacting piston unit, it would be uh, like tapping on the hopper wall, but it's all linear, one plane, simple back and forth. I've got a couple units here that put out what we call a rotary force. Now this first one is a turbine unit. If you think of a wheel on your car that's out of balance, as it goes around, that force output is in all directions as this thing spins around. And I've got a ball vibrator here that has a steel ball that rolls around inside a track. Same thing, rotary force output, just like the turbine. So which one do you choose? Well, when I get a call from a customer that, that may, and that the application is that they've got a hopper that Maybe they experience a bridging problem, a rat holing problem. Maybe they've got a sticky material and, and, and they literally have to pound the side of the hopper to clear the problem. I would suggest the linear piston vibrator. It provides that same exact type of force as walking up and smacking the wall with a mallet. Customers that have pharmaceutical applications, keeping powders flowing, uh, or another application would be a, a parts assembly line where you have parts coming down a line, maybe they need to merge and continue down the line, continue to a different operation, but you get a, a backlog, maybe they jam up, they, they bottleneck. Maybe you would consider a turbine for, for one of those uh, to, to just provide a nice hum, a nice buzz, to keep, a, again, a powder flowing or to keep the parts energized going down an assembly line. So rather than bottlenecking, uh, they, they sort of merge and continue down their merry way. That's a good application for a turbine. They, they run all day, they're fairly quiet, pretty efficient on air. So they're nice units for those type of applications. If a customer says, I've got a, a stamping operation and I've got a slanted or a sloped trough or a chute where the parts are supposed to come out and they slide down, um, or if they've got uh, maybe it's a uh, you know rocks or, or you know something something's kind of heavy that's meant to slide down a chute, uh, but it, every now and then they get them hung up or they need to clear that chute. You know I would think of a ball vibrator. Ball vibrators are very strong. They're very economical. Uh, they do make a little bit of noise. And unlike the turbines, you probably wouldn't want to run one of these all day. Uh, they, they use a little more air. I mean, think about blowing a, a steel ball around a track. Uh, it, it takes a little more air than to run one of the turbines. But for one of those heavy applications where you've got heavy parts or rocks or things that are supposed to slide down a chute, either manually operated or just on a timer, fire one of these up every now and then, 
run it for a few seconds, clear the chute, and, and off you go. So I know that was quick. I know that was a, a lot of information. Um, hopefully you got something out of this, some ideas on, on how to pick the right units for your, your application. And if you have any more questions that, that we can answer for you, please go to the website, contact us through the website, give us a call, check out the selection guide. Again, it's www.clevelandvibrator.com. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.